Hello everyone. Today we will learn about servlets in Java. So without further ado, let's get started. In the recent trends, a billion bytes of data is generated on the day-to-day -day basis. To gain access to this humongous amount of data, every person is required to send a request on the network and await a response. Most of us believe in the misconception that all of the web applications are created over the web frameworks like HTML, PHP and JavaScript. But did you know web applications can be based on Java using a service called Java Servlets? In this video, let's delve deep into Java Servlets and understand how this technology is useful for creating a web applications. Now let's take a look at the topics to be covered in this session. First and foremost, I will talk about World Wide Web and what is HTTP and how they are linked together. Next, I will tell you the difference between request and response methods of HTTP. And next, we will dive into the core topic of today's discussion and understand what are servlets. Then I will tell you the tool that was used before servlets came into existence. And then I will walk through the servlet architecture and lifecycle methods of servlet. After that, I will tell you how to create a simple servlet and what are the steps involved to create it. And then we will see the concept of generic servlet and its example. And moving further to the session, we will see what is servlet request and response methods. And finally, I will end the session by telling you some useful classes and interfaces of servlets. Before we jump into servlets, let's understand a few fundamentals of web. Web consists of billions of clients and servers that are connected through wires and wireless networks. First, the web client makes a request to the web server. And then what happens is, the web server receives the request and finds the resources and returns a response to the client. When a server answers a request, it usually sends some type of content to the client. Then the client uses a web browser to send a request to the server. The server often sends a response back to the browser with a set of instructions which is written in HTML. That is hypertext markup language. And all the browsers know how to display the HTML pages to the client. So this is actually what happens between server and the client on the web. So basically this is all about the backend working of World Wide Web. Now let's understand the connectivity between web and HTTP. Website is a collection of static files that is web pages such as HTML pages, images, graphics and many more. A web application is a website with dynamic functionality on the server. For example, Google, Facebook, Twitter, all these are the examples of web applications. So what is the link between web and HTTP? Let's see that now. HTTP is named as Hypertext Transfer Protocol. It is a protocol that client and server use on the web to communicate with each other. It is similar to other internet protocols such as SMTP that is Simple Mail Transfer Protocol and FTP that is File Transfer Protocol. And HTTP is said to be a stateless protocol that is it supports only one request per connection. This means that with HTTP the clients connect to the server to send one request and then they disconnect. And this mechanism allows more users to connect to the given server over a period of time. So basically what happens is the client sends an HTTP request and the server answers with the HTML page to the client using hypertext transfer protocol. The HTTP request can be made using a variety of methods but the ones which we use widely are get and post. And the method name itself will tell the server the kind of request that is being made and how the rest of the message will be formatted. Now let's understand the difference between GET and POST methods. In GET method, data is sent in header to the server. But in case of POST, it is sent in the request body. And GET request can send only limited amount of data. But in case of POST request, large amount of data can be sent. Again coming back to GET, GET request is not secure because data is exposed in URL. But in case of POST, it is secure because data is not exposed in URL. Get request can be bookmarked and it is more efficient. On the other hand, post request cannot be bookmarked. So these are some of the differences between HTTP GET and POST methods. And I hope you are clear with this difference. Also, we have learned a few basics of web. Now let's dive into the core topic and understand the concept of servlet. So the first question is, what is servlet? Now imagine you are searching some information on the internet. You open up your local browser and start typing it. This question from you to the internet is called as request. So further, this request is sent to the cloud. Or in technical terms, your browser sends your request to the respective server 
which is responsible for storing that particular information. Now the server gets triggered with your request and in return it will get you the information that you have requested for. This answer from the server is called as response. So this is how the request and response work in a server. For this process to happen so smoothly and effectively, we need a servlet. Digging deep into the server, we can find the component which is responsible for this effective job. It is called servlet container. This container holds a Java based web applications and set of individual components called as servlets. Now we are close to our answer. So this particular Java based component will take care of web request and response. To sum it up with a form of a definition, we can define it as follows. A servlet is a Java program that runs on the Java enabled web server or application server. They are used to handle the request obtained from the web server and process the request and produce the response and then send the response back to the web server. And they can also be described in many ways depending on the context. Basically, servlet is a technology which is used to create a web application and it's an API that provides many interfaces and classes during documentation. And servlet is an interface that must be implemented for creating any servlet. And it is also a class that extends the capabilities of servers and responds to the incoming request. The main thing is that it can respond to any kind of request. And servlet is a web component that was deployed on the server to create a dynamic web page. And servlet is robust and scalable. So before we jump into the depth of the servlet, let's understand what was used before servlets came into picture. So before servlets, we have CGI, that is Common Gateway Interface. It is an interface for writing the programs that can actually interact through our web server with the client that is running on the browser. It is a standard way for a web server to pass a user's request to an application program and receive the response to forward to the user. When the user requests a web page, the server sends back the requested page. However, when a user fills out a form on a web page and sends it in, it is processed by an application program. The web server typically passes the form information to a small application program. This program processes the data and sends back a confirmation message. This process of passing data back and forth between the server and the application is called the common gateway interface. It is part of the web's hypertext transfer protocol. But why isn't that used now and why people choose servlet over CGI? Because it was less secure, unscalable and consumed high response time. But servlets overcame all these disadvantages and provided high security, scalability and low response time. And that's the reason why servlets became more popular. Now let's move further and understand the architecture that lies behind the servlets. The architecture here discusses the communication interface, protocol used, requirements of client and server, the programming with the languages and softwares involved. Basically, it performs the task that is shown in the figure. First, it reads the explicit data sent by the clients, that is the browsers. And this data can include an HTML form on the web page, an applet or a custom HTTP client program. It also reads implicit HTTP request data sent by the clients. And that can be a cookie, media types and the compression schemes the browser understands. After that, servlet process the data and generate the results. This process may require communicating to a database, executing an RMI or COBRA call, invoking a web service or computing the response directly. So after processing the data, it sends both the explicit and implicit data. In case of explicit data, the document can be sent in various formats that includes HTML, binary file, XML, Excel and many more. In case of implicit HTTP response to the clients, it includes telling the browser or the client what type of document is being returned, setting the cookies and caching parameters and other such tasks. So basically these are the various tasks performed by servlets. Now let's move further and see various methods and lifecycle of servlets. First loading a servlet. When a server starts up, the servlet container deploy and loads all the servlets. Next a servlet is initialized by calling the init method. The init method is called by the servlet container to notify that this servlet instance is instantiated successfully and it is about to put into service. Then servlet calls the service method to process the client request. This method is invoked to inform the servlet about the client request. Finally, the servlet is terminated by calling the destroy method. The destroy method runs only once during the lifetime of a servlet and signals the end of the servlet instance. Remember that the init and destroy methods are called only once. 
finally a servlet is a garbage collected by the garbage collector of java virtual machine so this is all about the life cycle of servlet we will see what are the steps to create servlet first we have to create a dynamic web project and then we have to create a servlet and compile the servlet code after that we have to copy the servlet class file and add the mappings to the web.xml file next we have to start the server and start the web browser and request a servlet we will see a basic example to create a servlet to create a simple servlet make sure you have installed eclipse enterprise edition in your system i have already installed eclipse enterprise edition also you can see here i have configured apache tomcat version 8.5 to download the eclipse enterprise edition the link is given in the description box and you can check out there the first thing you have to do is click on the server and you can see i have already configured it to add a new server click on the window and select show view and select servers you can see the servers here because i have already configured it so simply click on new and select server and you can see the list of servers that has been present here i want to download version 8.5 and i have already done that and click on this and click on next and finish and that's all i have to do to configure the servers and you have to download the apache tomcat server that is compatible with the eclipse now click on the first link and you can see the latest version is 8.5 and you have to download the zip file and extract that and place it in one of the directory i have already done that once you extract this go to lib folder and you can see that the servlet api is being present and this is very important for any servlet program to run and if this file is not present then your program will never work so for the first time when you are configuring the tomcat server you have to configure the runtime environment for that click on the configure runtime environment and here click on the add button and select the server and click next copy this path paste it over here so the server will be located with all configuration files and click apply and close and finally finish after that your server will be all set now click this to start the server and you can see the server is being started now let's create a simple project and I understand how it works for that click on file and select new in that choose dynamic web project give a project name click on next next and check this box to generate web.xml file and web.xml file is called as a deployment descriptor file and it is an xml file that contains information on configuration of the web application including the configuration of servlets and web app is root element for it it plays an important role in mapping and url hiding it instructs the servlet container about which classes to be load and what parameters is to be set in the content and how to intercept the request coming from the browsers so once you check this box it will be automatically created in the project and click finish and now our project got created and you can see here the java resources and web services and source libraries also you can see the web app folder in that we have web inf and in that we have web.xml file which is a deployment descriptor now let's create a package for our project and give the name and finish now right click on the project and select new in that choose class and name the class click on finish and in this we are going to write the code import the necessary packages for the servlet first i am creating a string called message and i am calling the init method to display the message then i am using the do get method and i am passing the request and response to the http servlet and i am setting the response to the set content type and i am using the print writer method to display the output and then i call the destroy method and say do nothing because that will be called at the end of the program that indicates the end of the program now our simple java program is ready next what you have to do is to add the mappings to the xml file now choose the xml file now we are going to add the mappings make sure it's been added after the display name here we are going to specify two parameters that is servlet name and servlet class servlet name can be anything and in the servlet class i have to give the class name of the file it must be followed by the package name that is package dot class name 
after this you have to give the servlet mappings and here i'm giving the servlet name which is same thing as above and also i should give the url pattern now come back to the file and click on this and give run as and give run on server and choose first because that is the project that we have created and click on finish now server gets started and you can see the message that is hello world and this is the message that run on your web browser so this is the url pattern that is slash hello world and that's the one that i have given in the servlet mapping of web.xml file so basically this is how servlet works now i will tell you what is generic servlet and how it can be created a generic servlet is a protocol independent servlet that should always override the service method to handle the client request and the service method accepts two arguments that is request and response objects the request object tells the servlet about the request made by the client while the response object is used to return a response back to the client and generic servlet is an abstract class and it has only one abstract method which is service and that's why when we create a generic servlet by extending the generic servlet class we must override the service method so what are the advantages of that it is very easy to write and it has simple life cycle methods to write a generic servlet you need to extend the generic servlet and override the service method as i have told now let's see how to create and invoke a generic servlet again i have created a dynamic project and named as generic and create a new class file and that class file must be inside the package here we will be creating a generic servlet by extending the generic servlet class when creating a generic servlet you must override the service method and in this you can see i have called the service method and declare the request and response parameters and here i am setting the content type of the response being sent to the client and that response format is in html and in the print writer method i am declaring the output and it's going to print hello generic servlet now save this file now we have to write the mappings and here the servlet name can be anything and the class name must be a package name followed by class name and in case of servlet name i have given the same as above and the pattern will be slash generic save this now run the project now let's see what will be the output and we get this desired output and this is how the generic servlet works now we will understand the two important methods of http servlet class which is request and response methods first servlet request method when a client send a request to the web server the servlet container creates a servlet request and response objects and pass them as an argument to the servlet service method and the request object will provide access to the request information such as header and body information of the requested data coming to the servlet response the servlet container is connected to the web server that receives a http request on the client on a certain port when a client send a request to the web server the servlet container creates the request and response objects and pass them as an argument to the servlet service method the response objects allow you to format and send the response back to the client now coming to the last part of today's discussion let's see some useful classes and interfaces of servlets first servlet This is used to declare the life cycle method of servlet. And servlet config allows servlet to get initialization methods. The servlet context enable the servlet to log the access and access the information from the methods. We already know that the servlet request is used to read the data from the client request. And response is used to write the data to the client request. And generic servlet implements the servlet and servlet config interface. Input stream provides a read request from the client. and output stream provides output stream to write response to the client and exception indicates whether the servlet error has occurred the unavailable exception tells you that the servlet is unavailable the http servlet provides methods to handle http request and response and we know that http servlet request is used to read the data from the http request and http servlet response is used to write the data to the http response and that's all for this session thank you so much for watching